80% of your Shopify brand's SEO results will come from just 20% of the inputs. After working with over 50 Shopify brands in the last 12 months, I can confidently say that the five biggest needle movers for Shopify SEO are number one, having a solid, but not necessarily perfect technical foundation. Number two, full funnel keyword research. Number three, optimized money pages. Number four, well-structured internal links. And number five, quality backlinks. And in this video, I'm gonna share some quick strategies and inputs around these five big needle movers, some of which you can apply in a matter of minutes, which will keep bringing you results for months and years to come. My name is Kai Cromwell. I'm the founder of New Seas, and since starting our agency about two years ago, we've helped over 25 Shopify brands, two to three X the organic search revenue, and get results like these. And we use the exact same tactics and strategies I'm about to share with you time and time again to generate results just like these for our clients. So without further ado, Let's get into the video. So let's start with technical SEO. The number one low hanging fruit in this category is going to be page indexing. For now, let's forget about page speed, structured data, core web vitals, anything like that. At the end of the day, you wanna make sure that Google can actually crawl your website the way you want it to, indexing pages that will make you money and no indexing pages that will not. Fix all of your broken links and configure your robots.txt file to prevent any thin or duplicate content pages from being shown in search results. You don't need to have the fastest loading website. Page speed is so unimportant in most cases. Just compress your images and remove any unnecessary app scripts. This is more than enough on the page speed side. In the two plus years I've been running this agency, there's only one brand we've ever worked with that needed substantial page speed improvements. One in two years. Trust me when I say that there are bigger levers to pull like broken links and indexing. If you wanna see a full in-depth guide on how to troubleshoot any technical SEO issues, drop it in the comments section and I'll address it in a future video. So that brings me to topic number two, keyword research. You can get ahead of 99% of stores by spending just a few hours in your initial research phase. Beyond Ahrefs, SEMrush, tools like that, you can find out what people want to know before they buy with tools like Google Search Console, Google Ads Keyword Planner, Reddit, Answer the Public, competitor FAQs, all these kinds of things. Once you've identified kind of your main core keywords, you should further segment them into two categories, money keywords and blog keywords. Now, money keywords are keywords that have purchase intent, okay? When someone types them into Google, they are looking to buy something. These kinds of keywords with this intent should only, only be mapped and used on your product and collection pages. Your blog keywords, which are keywords that are more informative in nature or comparative, like what is XYZ, how to do certain thing, brand A versus brand B, those are informational comparative blog keywords. I have a full guide on how to segment these money and blog keywords in the description. So make sure to check that out once you've watched this entire video. Next up, content strategy. Your content strategy should be based on building topical authority. Write three to five blogs a month based off your discovered blog keywords and internally link from each blog to the focus product collection within that cluster. You also need to build, I'd say a minimum of three to five internal links to other blogs in that same cluster as well. This does not just help Google crawl your site more easily. That's what everyone tells you, help Google crawl your site. No, internal links are so you get to tell Google exactly where to look, giving you complete control over your rankings, okay? You're not helping it, you're telling it what to do with these links. Once you figured out the ideal combination of revenue generating and traffic generating keywords, it's time to actually utilize them. You're here to make money, so start with your money pages first, all right? Add your target keyword to each of the following locations on your money page, whether it's a product page or collection, the same thing will apply. Title, URL, meta title and description, H2s and H3s, naturally throughout the content, as well as your image alt text. Let's go one level deeper here and talk about collections. Most of your competitors, and maybe even you right now, you're going to build a single collection or you're going to build a collection without giving even much thought to your SEO. However, there is a gold mine of opportunity you can capture almost immediately just by building out sub collections. Let's say you sell supplements that boost energy. They are good for cognitive function. Maybe they enhance your mood as well. Instead of just like having one, you can have multiple collections, all selling the same SKUs. So you could build a, a collection or category page for supplements for cognitive function, another one for supplements for higher energy, supplements for enhanced mood, maybe it does something to your libido, you could have one for that too, right? Nothing is gonna change in your backend fulfillment. The same SKU will be included in multiple sub collections, right? So if you only sell three products, but they all do three, four, five different things, they can all exist in those other collections without any disruption of your backend. It won't affect SEO at all. This is totally like above board. There's no duplicate content issues or anything like that to worry about that. The benefit of doing it this way is that all of your eggs aren't in just one basket with one keyword. If you're looking at that example and you're like, okay, well, I could rank for enhanced mood easier than I could rank for higher energy. Well, you don't have to choose. You can rank for both of them. This is going to enable you to reach thousands more customers who all 
effectively want the same kind of product. They're just searching for it a different way. Next up, I wanna go a little bit deeper on internal links, all right? We already touched on this when we spoke on the best practices of writing blogs. The truth is internal links will make you a substantially more amount of money than you ever could possibly think they might, and they're unbelievably stupid easy to implement. Here's how to do it. Every blog post needs to have one internal link, and it needs to be the very first internal link, and it needs to go to the target product or collection page right, within that cluster. The remainder of the blog, there should be at least, I'd say three, four, maybe five or more um, internal links to other blogs in that same cluster as well. You can also link from, if you have multiple collections, like the sub collection example we just talked through, you can link between those as well. You should also link from your homepage, your main navigation and your footer menu. There should be a link in each of those three locations to your main or your priority collection or collections pages. Okay, last up, backlinks. Backlinks are expensive. That is the unfortunate truth. Um, if you're learning that they cost money now, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but that is just simply the most scalable way to build links for e-commerce. Even with a limited budget, let's say 700 to 1,000 bucks a month, you can still be building like three to five a month. If you build links directly to product pages, which is a very unfortunate misconception a lot of people have, Google will ignore them. And in some cases, you actually may get hit with a spam penalty. Do not build backlinks to your product pages, okay? Build them to your homepage, your collection pages, and your blogs and let the internal links that you so carefully built distribute the backlink value throughout your site as intended. What's gonna happen is if you do your internal linking properly, all of the link equity will end up being concentrated on your collection pages, which is how you're going to make an obscene amount of money with SEO. Now, I made a video specifically on how to design an SEO strategy using broken link building, which is another good link building tactic on a budget. It does go more in depth on how you can easily pick these up. Find a link for the description in below. So that is a full concise e-commerce SEO guide on how to rank your Shopify store higher this year, 2024. If you have any questions, please drop them down in the comment section below. I've got a full five hour SEO course made for beginner SEOs going more in depth on how we're able to add thousands of dollars to our clients organic search revenue every single month on a consistent basis. And if you're a brand looking to get off the paid ads hamster wheel, maybe get out of your current bad SEO agency and make two, three, four, even five X more through organic search revenue, make sure to book a free discovery call below. Find the link in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.